Hello friends, welcome to my channel Hira Techies. In this video, let's talk about how to implement loading spinner in Angular application. For doing this implementation, I am going to use this materially way progress spinner component and also the implementation point of view we can do from the particular model and also the complete application level. That means the global implementation. Okay. Now let me go to my application. Here first I am going to create a new component for implementing the loading spinner. The component name we can provide loading spinner. Okay. Okay, the component is created. We can take this selector. I am going to include this into our app dot component. Okay. Okay, this is fine. So I am going to use the materially way spinner. So let me import the required model. So the component name is progress spinner. Okay. Mat progress spinner model. The model name is include in this export side. So then it will be automatically imported in our app dot model. So next let me go back to our component side. So whatever code currently we have, let me remove everything. I'm just added one new tag. Inside that, let me use this mat progress spinner. Next I'm going to include the value. So let me provide the default value is 50. Okay. See now. So in this bottom corner, we are able to see this progress spinner. And let me include one more property, mode. Okay, I provided indeterminate. So let me save this one. See now it is uh, rotating. And the color we are able to see as the blue color. So let me change this into. See, the color also got changed, okay. So next what I'm going to do, let me include some custom CSS for making this into center and also make sure the whole content should be disabled. Okay. I just added here so we can save this one and next let me take this class. So in this div, I'm going to include this class. So similarly, let me create one more div tag. Add next to this spinner class, okay. See the response now. So the whole section is disabled and also our spinner is loading. For controlling this one, let me declare one variable also. And let me create one constructor. The future it is needed is loaded. So the default value let me provide false. So let me copy this one. Next in our HTML side, we can use this ng. Okay, initially it is disabled. Okay. Okay, this is the basic implementation of material UI progress spinner. Okay. So the same thing we can apply for our NGRX concept. So I'm going to implement for our uh, black screen example. Okay. For this edit, update, delete and the initial load, uh, we can include the same progress spinner. Now let me go to the NGRX side. We can start our changes from this model. Okay. So here we have this blog list and error message. So after that, let me include is loaded. At the data type, we can provide us Boolean. So let me save this one. Next in our state, in this initial state, we can provide the value is false. Okay. Then in our selector, I am going to create one more selector. Get spinner state. We can just return this one is loaded. Okay. Next in our action, I am going to declare one variable. We can provide the name is load spinner. 
similarly our action load spinner okay and in this props we can pass this is loaded and the data type is boolean next let me move on the reducer side so in this reducer side I am going to include one more section and here I am checking the action is load spinner so I am removing this section it's not needed and here we no need to assign the block list value at the end I am going to setting the value for this is loaded from the action I will get the input is loaded okay so this is the basic change similarly for our other methods so like this initial load page once our action is completed make sure we have to set the values into false so let me copy this one we have to include all the places because once our action is completed obviously we have to stop the spinner so that's what i have including like this it is applicable for the error scenario also and finally we have changes in our effect side so in this success scenario there is no problem we are dispatching this load block success so obviously in this reducer side we have included the changes so in this error scenario we are just dispatching this load block fail okay basically it is showing the alert message only so here i am going to dispatch one more action so that is our load spinner okay so this one also having one props we have to set the values into false so let me copy this one we have to include for other effects too and next in our update and finally in this delete okay let me save this one next let me come back to our component side so in this TS I am going to inject the store okay and also let me implement the ng on in hook and here I am going to subscribe our selector okay this dot store dot select and our selector name is get spinner state so let me subscribe this one so this dot is loaded equal to response so let me format this one okay this is fine next let me move on our block component okay so in this initial load we are dispatching this load block action okay so before that let me dispatch one more action so that is nothing but our load spinner and the props I am going to pass this into true we have to maintain the format then only it will work so let me refresh the screen now okay so the spinner is coming and it is moving very quickly so let me include some timeout okay so let me provide a thousand milliseconds and we can move these functions into inside the timeout so now if I am refreshing so now we are able to see our spinner after some time our data are loaded and similarly the spinner also disappeared okay so let me apply the same logic into our other functionalities so let me copy this one okay first in our remove scenario I mean this delete I just added inside the timeout only I am dispatching this one okay at the same time so once the action is started 
I am dispatching this load spinner with a value of true. So let me remove this one. See, we are able to see the spinner. So removed successfully and also our spinner is disappeared. Okay. So next let me move on this, this add block component. So let me copy the same changes. Here in this update and create, both are we are handling from this save blocks itself. I'm just added here. Okay. And we have to import this load spinner. Okay. Add then this complete section. I can move into that timeout area. Now see. I am creating a new record. See, the spinner is loading. And we got a message created successfully. And also it is reflected here. Okay. Tick. See. Again, the spinner is loading. So finally, it is updated. Okay. So this is the way we have to implement the loading spinner in our Angular application using NGRX concept. So here the thing is, I just implemented for this block screen only. Okay. So let me show you. So in this model itself, this is mainly created for this block screen only. So here only I'm just declaring this is loaded variable. So the same variable only I am using in our loading spinner component. Okay. For doing this application level implementation, we have to move this complete logic into a separate section. So already I have created this global. Okay. So here we have this app state model. Okay. So in this app state model, I just use this counter and block. So basically it is not required. So, so instead of that, what I'm going to use just is loaded. And the data type is same Boolean. We can remove all other items. And the next thing is we have to create one state. So already I have a file with the app dot state, uh, but actually here I am doing this uh, combine reducer. Okay, we can create one more file and providing the name is global dot state. So next to export global state and app state model is loaded equal to false okay our state also ready next we should have the reducer so let me create one more file app.reducer so let me copy the complete code from our reducer side i am going to include it here so instead of this block reducer, we can use app reducer. Okay. App reducer just added and we have to import this create reducer. And here the initial state is global state only. Okay. So let me remove all the items. These all are not needed. We can have this uh, load spinner that is fine. And we need to import this on. So let me format this one. So next we have to include this reducer also in our combined reducer. So that is available in our app dot state. Okay. App reducer. And here I am going to create one selector also. App dot selector. That is. Okay. So the same way we have to copy everything. I just added in our app selector. So first instead of the black state, let me provide us the app state. We have to inject these functions and I'm going to remove these all the functions. So we have to import this create selector also load spinner. So here I'm going to return this is loaded. So let me save this one. Finally, this action side. So I already just included some action in our block data action. So let me cut this one. 
I'm moving this into our app state. I mean this app action. And this one also. So we are getting so many error. So I just removed. And here also this function is not needed. And next in our effect side. So this load spinner. I'm just removed. So after that, we can include once again. Okay. So now the error got resolved. So next in our app dot selector, and here also let me reimport it once again. Load spinner. Okay. Okay. The most of the changes are done. Next in this component point of view. So here also same. I have to do for this add block component also. So the most of the changes we have done. Now let me go back to our loading spinner. So here we have the selector from this block and also this global. We can use this global, okay? So the block actually it's not needed. We have to command everything. So I'm just added here. Okay, I'm getting this error. So let me verify. Okay, in this state. Okay, basically here I have to pass the state only. Okay, now the error got resolved. Okay. So now if I'm trying to refresh the page. So see you now the spinner is loading it is not stopped. So the reason is so now our load spinner action working based on the global state. Okay. So previously we handled from our block state itself. So here after the block state is actually not needed and also we have to include some other changes from this component and also the effects. Okay. First here what we can do. So initially we provided the value is true. Once it is dispatched this load block, we have to dispatch this action once again with the value of false. So let me save this one. So the load is fine. Okay. So next what I'm going to do, let me include the changes for the other actions. For the other actions, I'm not going to directly include it here. So instead of that, I am going to include it in our EFX side. Okay. So before that, let me remove this uh, is load variable from our block screen. So let me go to our block. Okay. So we only added. So instead of completely removing, I am just commenting. Okay. For the reference, we can use. So state. Next in our model. And in our selector, so this selector also it's not needed. So anyway, let me comment this one, okay? And in our reducer, so the reducer, we already removed that particular section, and this is load false, okay? So that also we can command. Next, let me move on the effect side, okay? We can go one by one. First, let me take this add block. So in this add block, this failure scenario, we are dispatched this load spinner false. So let me copy this one. And in this access scenario, before showing this alert, let me dispatch this spinner. Okay. So the same thing we can apply for this update. And this delete. Okay, this is fine. And the final one is load. It's not needed because already we have handled from our component side. So let me save it. See now. So it is working fine. So if I'm creating a new record also, testing. See, finally I'm trying to remove. So this is working fine.
so here after if you are creating any new model also so the same action we can dispatch so wherever the loading is required we have to dispatch the same load spinner action we have to provide the value is true so similarly if you want to stop the spinner we have to pass the prop is false that's it okay so now we are in the end of the video still if you have any doubts or clarification please post in the comment box and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel so so in my next video i am going to cover the complete predictions using ngrx in angular application okay thank you thanks for watching